let's get to the main move which is knight f6. Knight f6, well obviously there are two moves. We have castle and e5. I do not recommend castle because there is long variations that come after this. You can memorize it very sharp but you don't learn real chess by playing them. And I am not the um, big enthusiast, I'm not enthusiastic to play castle ever. We want to play e5, that's what I recommend. And here, black has a number of different continuations. Black has knight g4, actually three main continuations. d5 and knight e4. Well, actually d5, knight e4 or knight g4, they are not connected. So let's start with one of them. Let's start with the main variations, d5. This is the main move that has to be, we have to be very well prepared. And the reason why I recommend this, this opening, to uh, recommend you to play this opening, because I made a lot of developments myself, and I refute number of very well known uh, theoretical and uh, th theoretical assessment, theoretical continuations here. I refuted them and I put the system back uh, to life. And well, let's see what do we do. Bishop b5 is theoretical move, and now black has two continuations knight e4 and knight d7. Knight e4 is the best and most common way to play. Knight g4 makes no sense because we're going to go h3 and knight has to go to h6 where we can take and ruin black's pawn structure. So two moves are knight e4 and knight d7. Let's get knight d7 move out of the way. What do we play on knight d7? We simply castle here. When black goes bishop e7, what we want to do, of course it's easy for us to get our pawn back, but we don't want to do it this way because black is going to have good game. They're going to go knight b6 followed by c5, so we don't want to give black this play. So what we do instead, we go rook e1, and when black castles, we go knight to d2. Now what we want to do, our plan is knight b3 and knight takes d4. What can black do here? Now, I have to mention, as soon as black played knight d7, there was a way for us in this position to get the pawn back. We can take bishop takes c6 and queen takes d4. We didn't do it. We could have gotten this pawn back on every move after this. But we did not sacrifice the central pawn just to get it back. We want to get back and we want to get superior position. We're going to get some positional advantage or space advantage. So that's why we castle on bishop e7, rook e1, and on castling, we're going knight to d2, and now what we want is to go knight b3, and knight takes d4. What can black do about it? Now, black can go a6, and again, we could take now on c6, but I don't want to. I want to go either bishop f1 or bishop d3 and then I want to take on d4. Now suppose black goes knight b6. Now what I want to do, I still don't want to take the pawn back because my goal is to get pawn back when I have some positional advantage. 
and I don't want bishop to pin my knight on g4. For example, after knight takes d4, knight will take on d4. And now if I take with the knight, he may go even c5. And I don't, I'm not really that crazy about white's position. So what we want to do, remember, there is no rush. This pawn on d4 is not going anywhere. I want to play h3, simply. And then I'm going to take on d4 later. I may even go bishop f4 first. Then I may go queen d2 and rook d1. The pawn on d4 can never be protected. And I don't want to give bishop for a knight. If black plays a6, I may go bishop d3. And then I will take on d4 where I am going to have superior position. For example, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and after c5, knight f5. That I like because white is better here. So that's the best way to play against um, knight d7. But on the other hand, uh, you can hardly see knight d7 move. Uh, uh, the black almost never plays knight d7. And of course, the main move in the position is knight to e4. After e4, e5, knight f3, uh, knight c6, d4, e d, bishop c4, knight f6, e5, d5, bishop b5, and knight d7, you can hardly ever see in your game, knight e4 is the main continuation. And here we play knight takes d4, uh, and black has only two moves they can consider here. They can play bishop c5 or bishop d7. Now let's, let's look at those moves. Uh, let's look at bishop d7 first. Bishop d7 is the most logical and, and um, most expected move. Well, now our pawn on e5 is hanging, so we have to play bishop takes c6, pawn takes c6, and we castle. Here is the position, the key position of whole opening. Black has two bishops, and black has potentials moving the central pawns. These double pawns are not, is not necessarily bad for black, maybe real good. Now here, black has three different ways they can play this position. They can go bishop e7, not play bishop c5, because they may want to play bishop e7 to later activate pawns, c and d pawns, or they may play bishop c5, or they may play c5 right away, try to move these pawns immediately. Okay, again, there is no, um, any, no order in which we have to look at this continuation. Well, let's look with c5 moves. Let's look what we're going to do on c5. On c5, move I recommend is knight to b3. After knight b3, d5 pawn is hanging, and let's see what black can do. Black can go c4, but c4 is not very good because queen takes d5, attacking the knight on e4. So here, bishop b5, but then we go rook e1, and now black has to continue development. They cannot keep pushing pawn because the knight goes to d4, attacking the bishop. So if they play bishop e7, strangely enough, this move uh, simply bad because we're going to go f3 and black is in a lot of trouble because after knight g5, we can simply take on g5, bishop takes g5, and knight takes c5. We just want a very 
important pawn, part of Black's chain that would uh, want to move. And then we're going to go knight c3. We have extra pawn and a better position. So this variation is clearly not acceptable for Black. Uh, so here, Black has difficulties finding uh, a useful move. Well, if they go bishop c6, or if they never play bishop b5, but go bishop c6 right away, supporting the center, we, what we will do, we go f3, and after knight g5, f4, and after knight e4, knight c3. Well, and when black takes on c3, we take back, and this position is very, very bad for black. Because when they try to develop, we're going to go f5, or even bishop e3, attacking c5 pawn, and when black goes c5, c4, then knight d4, followed by f5, and queen g4. Black is nearly lost here. So what else can they do? They can go beside c5, bishop to e7, and bishop to c5. Well, they have to develop pieces. Well, let's start with bishop e7. On bishop e7, we have basically in this position, you know, when you play this position, you have to know one thing. You have to be convinced to do one out of two things. Then you play this opening correctly. You either get direct attack on opponent's king, or get total blockade of dark squares. And, well, I explain you a little down the road what I mean by blockade of the dark squares. So, blockade on dark squares will happen in the bishop c5 case. Now, now we look at bishop e7. So, what we want to do, since bishop e7 kind of congesting uh, black's background pieces. So we go f3. What we want to do, we want to activate f-pawn. So we don't go f4 because we're going to win a tempo if we go f3 first. Knight g5 or knight c5. Knight g5, for example. f4, knight e4. Now, notice if he goes knight e6, you will go f5. He has no time to pin you, so when black takes on d4, queen takes d4, you see the position is very dangerous for black. White is threatening to completely open black's king position. So, um, knight should go back to e4. And we have a knight on b1 here. So now what we do is we play knight to c3. Not knight d2, knight c3. And when black takes on c3, we take back with a pawn. We don't mind double pawns. Double pawns are very, very good here. Because when black castles and we go f5, you have to notice here that if black goes c5, we go knight to b3, not knight e2. Our, we cannot go knight f3 because we lose the f5 pawn. And it's interesting why we going knight b3 and not knight e2. We go knight b3, c4, knight d4, c5, and now knight e2. It looks like white made some kind of a time-wasting moves. No. There is a reason why we should go knight b3. And here it is. When we go knight e2, we're allowing black to play bishop b5 and pinning the knight and later on taking the knight maybe. That will relieve little, uh, uh, release the pressure. So, we want to go knight to b3. 
Now if black goes bishop b5, we can go rook f3 or rook e1, and then we go bishop e3, putting pressure on c5 pawn and forcing black to go c4 and blocking their own bishop. So once we go knight b3, and if black goes c4, we go knight d4 back, and when they go c5, we go knight e2. It's a beautiful square for knight. As long as black cannot play bishop b5, and in this case, take that knight. So now knight on e2 stands real well, because it, gets good, it has good potentials after bishop c6. We could go bishop e3, stop d4, or go knight g3, followed by knight h5, and queen g4. Knight is very active player in, on, uh, in a kingside attack. This is very, very powerful position for white. So again, after bishop e7, we go f3. Here is the position, f3. Doesn't change anything if black plays bishop knight c5, because we're going to go f4 then. And uh, if uh, black castles, we go f5, which should transpose to the same position. And if knight e6, also f5. And of knight, f knight e4 again, we go knight c3, that gives us very, very strong position. Now let's look at uh, bishop c5 move, which is the, the main move here, and I think is the strongest move in this position. We go f3, knight goes to g5, and we go uh, f4, giving black again two options, to play knight e4 or knight e6. We don't, on knight e4 we play bishop e3, and on knight e6 we play pawn c3. And here is the, here is why. On knight e6, we go pawn c3 because we want to gain tempo on f5, and if he takes our knight, we want to take with a pawn, to gain tempo on attacking bishop. So at the knight e6 and c3, suppose black castles, we go f5, knight takes d4, cd, and after bishop b6, simply developing quickly knight c3, don't push the king, uh, the e and f pawns yet. We have to complete development, bring the pieces. Pawns on e5 and f5, are very powerful and we don't have to push them right away. So, for example, on move like rook e8, be careful, don't blunder rook takes e5 move. On something like rook to e8, it's useful to move the king out of the way, out of the pin. That eliminates rook takes e5 threat and just is good to stay out of uh, uh, away from uh, uh, bishop B7, from diagonal, from a7, g1 diagonal. So this position is very promising for white also. But that's in case, um, in this position, after bishop c5, we played f3, knight g5, and f4. But main move is knight e4, of course. Then we go bishop e3, and next thing we want to do, no matter what he plays, we want to exchange e4 knight for our b1 knight. But we have to be very, very careful the way we do that. If black castles, we must play knight d2, and if black plays bishop b6, we must play knight c3. And make sure you do it correctly or you're gonna have bad position. In both cases, in a castle on bishop b6, if you don't play correct knight move, you may get bad position. And here's why. If 
black castles in this position. You see they cannot push c5 yet on the next move anyway. So what white wants to do, as I mentioned before, you have to get either kingside attack or dark square blockade. And here we playing for dark square blockade. We go knight d2, knight takes d2 or f5. It does not make any difference. Knight takes d2, queen takes d2. And now when black goes bishop b6 trying to activate the c pawn, we go knight b3 and mission accomplished. We just blocked uh, c5 and d4 squares. Dark squares. We're gonna go knight c5, queen c3, and pawn b4. It's a total blockade position. Black center is blocked and white has much better position. Um, you have no we we're gonna analyze this a little further. But now before we go on with this variation. I want to show you what's the difference when if he plays bishop b6 first. Knight d2 is a bad move now. And here is why. Because we don't, we cannot make the blockade because knight takes d2, queen takes d2, pawn c5, knight b3, pawn d4, bishop f2, bishop c6, followed by queen d5, black has very powerful position. But we're not going to let them do that. Okay, if black, if black plays bishop e3 first, we change the plan. Then we go knight to c3. Now, if they take on c3, they cannot do the same thing. Because we're going to take back with the pawn, and after c5, we go knight b3. And as you, say, as you see now, uh, we have a pawn on c3, and d4 cannot be played. So black is in a lot of trouble. They have c and d pawn hanging. And if bishop comes to b5, simply rook f2, or even rook e1, whichever you want. So And now c pawn is hanging, that is very difficult to defend. And after c4, we can go either knight d4 followed by f5, or maybe even knight c5 followed by queen d4 and f5. In both cases, black has a very difficult game. So again, here is the position where black has two moves. They can castle, Bishop is on e3, then we play knight d2, and they can go bishop to b6, then we go knight c3. And don't you make mistake about it. That's the exactly how it must be played. Now, if knight takes on c3, we take back, and we have the stopper pawn on c3 that does not allow black's pawns to advance further. So this is the way this should be played. Now let's go on and continue the um, analysis with blockade position, how this should be played. Knight takes d2, queen takes d2, bishop b6, knight b3, queen to e7, and we play queen to c3. Now suppose black goes f6. Now we can go knight c5. Well, I don't like to put bishop on c5 because bishop is pinned and black does not have to take on c5. So we put knight c5, pawn takes c5, pawn takes c5. Now you see that black's central pawns are totally blocked. We have serious positional advantage. Now if rook goes to e8, we, we will go simply b4. 
uh, because you see our knight is protect just enough number of times with queen and bishop but we want to release the queen and use queen for kingside play and we have to start playing on kingside so we're going to go b4 and there is a trap remember black cannot take on e5 because black loses there is a very powerful shot that wins immediately here rook f8 check and no matter which way white which way black takes the rook they're gonna lose the queen on king takes f8 knight takes d7 check and a fork and on uh, rook takes f8 simply queen takes e5 so this can be done cannot be done and if black plays bishop takes c5 which they will have to do sooner or later because we're going to go a4 and a5 bishop will have to take this knight it's just a matter of time we'll play bishop takes c5 again pawn cannot be taken because of rook f8 check that wins the queen and if queen moves to e6 somewhere then white plays rook f3 followed by rook f1 doubling rook on f file opposite color bishops always make attack stronger then we can go rook g3 rook f6 remember you can never take here because of either rook f8 check or bishop d4 having a very powerful very strong pressure on g7 pawn so you don't have to directly protect your e5 pawn well in some cases for example the queen goes to g6 you may even be happy to give this pawn up to give it away also on rook takes e6 now you may go rook g3 followed by bishop d4 this may be very very dangerous for black and it will it is dangerous so this is the way to play the blockade position and there are several different varieties where we will get these blockade positions so in this position after white's fifth move e5 besides the main move d5 black has two other continuations one of them is knight to e4 and the other one is knight to g4 now let's look at them knight to e4 there are couple of ways we can play we can simply castle and uh, maybe we don't get much, much of an advantage after d6 of uh, or uh, uh, black's d5 that's something you can easily look in the uh, any theoretical uh, book any book about the um, uh, openings but the what I recommend in this position to play is bishop to d5 after which black is almost forced to play knight c5 and we castle so what we want to do is uh, simply get our pawn back with white and only reason black would play knight e4 is to play knight e6 now and try to maintain the extra pawn let's see what's going to happen after knight to e6 we play rook to e1 black plays bishop to e7 and you see we cannot get our pawn back by taking knight on c6 and knight on e6 because in both cases black would recapture with a d pawn and we are not gonna get our pawn back so what we want to do here we want to play knight to d2 castle knight to b3 now white is ready to capture the pawn on d4 with the knight and have a little space advantage and have a little better position actually so move for black is d6 then we go bishop takes c6 pawn takes c6 
and knight b takes to d4. This position is definitely better for white, and here is why. Uh, it's not good for black to take pawn on e5, because after knight takes e6, they are in very bad shape, because queen hangs, and pawn hangs on e5, and bishop on e7 is also in danger. For example, on queen takes d1, white takes in between move, plays in, in between move, knight takes e7, check, winning a bishop. So, d takes e is definitely uh, not a good move. The choice that black has is to play knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and bishop d7, or maybe bishop d7 right away. On bishop d7 right away, we can simply play knight f5. You can tell we have certain pressure on black's cent uh, center, and we have better development, and we can always get rid of uh, black's dark square bishop, and we're going to have some advantage. And if black plays knight takes d4, we go knight takes d4, and again, d takes c is a bad move, because knight takes c6 wins at least a pawn. Queen takes d1 loses again to knight takes c7 check, and uh, black is experiencing serious problems in this position. So, so in this position, black must play something like bishop d7, and we can go either bishop f4, and we are better developed, and our piece is more active, and we have a little bit of an advantage. Or maybe even e takes d, and after c takes d, we can play bishop f4, and maybe even queen f3, attacking c6 pawn, followed by bishop f4, white has slight advantage. So that's pretty much all you have to know if, uh, uh, what to do if black uh, plays knight e4 move on, um, uh, move 5 after e5, knight to e4. So we go bishop d5, and after knight c5 we castle, and on knight e6, we go rook e1. So that's briefly, that briefly covers the knight e4 continuation. Now, let's go to the other move, which is knight to g4. Now, after knight g4, it's difficult and very difficult, I would say, for white to get an advantage, but white definitely has in all variations, comfortable position. So we have to play queen e2. And now why queen e2? Why do we have to protect the e5 pawn by playing queen e2? Why not castling? Or why not bishop to f4? Now, bishop to f4 we don't want to play because black is going to go d6. And they are free well, we have to take on d6, and black comfortably concludes development. We don't want to do this, and we don't want to castle for the same reason, because black goes d6, and if we take, black is going to play bishop takes d6. So, what white has to do here, white has to interfere with d6 move. So white goes queen to e2. And now, if black simply continues development, then we can go, after bishop e7, we can go simply h3. And knight will be forced to go to h6, and then we damage black's, black's kingside pawn structure. So, what, what is the best move in this position for black is to queen e7. And now we go bishop f4. And here, black must play one of two moves, f6 or d6. And in both cases, position simplifies, and I would say, in both cases, white has a little advantage. Now, let's look at this continuation. d6, pawn takes d6. 
Well, black of course can retake with the c pawn, but I think it's better if black takes the queen on e2, bishop takes e2, and bishop takes d6. Now this position is slightly better for white because white plays bishop takes d6, pawn takes d6, and now it's important we don't have to rush to get our d4 pawn back. So we're gonna go knight to a3. And now white wants to play knight to b5, attacking both d pawns, or maybe knight to c4 in case black plays a6, then we can go knight c, c4, attacking d6 pawn and threatening knight b6. And also, if black plays something like knight e5, maybe we can cast along and put more pressure on d4 pawn and eventually get it back. So this position is slightly better. Black cannot uh, keep an extra pawn on d4 under no circumstances. Knight b5, knight c4, and castling projected castling for white king to uh, queen side, and maybe even queen side if knight does not move from g4. So white has some advantage and they have no problems getting their pawn back. Now, we have to cover also f6 continuation. It does not represent any danger or any problem for white, but as I already mentioned, it's not that easy to get serious advantage in this position. Now, when black plays f6, we have to take on f6, and here black has three moves. They can capture back with a knight, they can capture back with a pawn, or they can capture our queen first. In all three cases, what is going to happen is white will definitely get d4 pawn back. White, and they will have at least equal position. I think they will have some slight advantage. Well, let's look at g takes f. What we have to do, there is some possibility of playing bishop takes c7, and black does not win white's bishop. White goes bishop b5, but this is not safe for white. And I was recommending this in my previous uh, publications, in my previous DVDs. Well, now I came to the conclusion that it's a lot easier for white to play and a lot safer to play knight d2 with a simple idea of going knight b3 and getting the d4 pawn. No matter what black does, they cannot effectively interfere with it. Now on queen takes e2, we go bishop takes e2. Now suppose black is stubborn and they want to keep an extra pawn. Bishop c5, knight to b3. Now on bishop b6, well here is the extra pawn on d4. We're gonna get it eventually. We could go b bishop b5 and try to get it back or we could go even h3 and after knight e5 castling long. Eventually we're going to get this pawn back and knight takes f3, bishop takes f3. Now, for now, black does keep an extra pawn, but obviously white is going to have no problem getting it back after bishop takes c6 and knight takes d4. This is one option. Or White can simply play rook h to e1 and continue direct attack on black's king. So it's not recommended in that position for black to try to hold on to an extra pawn. White gets a pawn back and they will have at least, at least, comfortable position. Now let's go back and again summarize what we just, what we just uh, went through. What we went through was e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We go d4 and after ed we go bishop c4. And now on main move knight f6, 
white goes e5 and there are three moves d5 knight e4 and knight g4 we covered them all and we came to conclusion white is throughout whole opening uh, they are between some advantage and big advantage and slightly better position so that means i will give a uh, very um I, I would recommend to play this opening very frequently the other thing 